It was a lovely sunny day on May 13th, 2016. We left the Kingstown Harbor at 10 a.m. aboard the Jaden Sun Fast Ferry Service to Kanawan. The pleasant journey lasted just under two hours with one stop on Beckway. Sitting on the ferry, taking in the sounds and scenes of nature, looking at the turquoise waters and thinking that it is little wonder that these Grenadine Islands have captured the hearts of many pleasure-seeking tourists who had no choice but to relinquish their desires to sail the high seas after just one glimpse of these beautiful Grenadine Islands. My thoughts were interrupted by the loud boat horn followed by a voice on the overhead speakers announcing that we had arrived on Kanawan. Kanawan is a verdant hilly island known for its beautiful beaches and a coral reef protected turquoise lagoon. As we waited for the boat to dock, several residents of Kanawan had also gathered and were waiting to transact business with the ferry. Once the boat docked, some collected parcels and others boxes filled with provision, presumably for sale at the Kanawan market close by. Finally, we got off the ferry with some who had no doubt come to Kanawan to spend a day of fun enjoying the beauty of the island. We were not as fortunate as the pleasure seekers. We were part of a delegation comprising other media colleagues and government officials who had traveled to Kanawan as part of an organized tour of several developments on the island. taking place on the picturesque Grenadine Island of Kanawan. Our first stop is at Glossy Bay and project managers take us around this lovely project where a massive marina is under construction. Investors are looking to develop an ultra-high-end U.S. $100 million marine community here. Investors say that the area at Glossy Bay is ideal for this development, which will comprise 125 berths for luxury yachts and about 16 private villas. Christopher Wadika, the project manager, explains the concept of the project. You'll see the original artist concept. This is a view from Glossy Hill, uh, which is the hill just to the, to the west. So here you see the marine, marine base and some of the intended yachts, the super yachts that will be berthing in the uh, berth keys one through three. Uh, this is an original concept. The bridge concept's gone. There's a lot has changed in terms of the development and through our value engineering processes. You can see the idea for the beachfront villas and then again further population up here on Tafia. This area here will um, eventually support, it's a service area with a diving centre, temporary catenary, and then this area here which is obscured by the trees in the artist's rendition, uh, it's the huge commercial area, um, something like a thousand plus square metres. So if we just come through here, here's an aerial view. Uh, just reinforcing the concept of the whole marine community that we're developing here, again it's facilitating um, the ease to come in by private jet and uh, corporate corporate flights directly to the airport with the concept of a bare five minute walk across the road and the intended clientele and users of the marina can just walk into the facility, secure facility with berthing for up to 125 vessels. Vessels are going to range from 110 meters down to 10 meters. 
So in terms of people that still work Imperial, it's 330 plus feet, down to about 30 feet each vessel. There's a view from, this was October I think, right Bob? Just yes. through, during through October uh, 2015. Yep. So this is a view from Glossy. As we go out now, you'll see how much the, uh, the dynamics has changed. This site in itself has changed rapidly over the last 10 months, working yep. day shifts and night shifts. Um, currently, I think we have 300 plus employees. 350 on Vincentian. All Vincentian, and the intent is obviously uh, to try and maintain the high level of employment through the development and the phase development of the community. Um, not only just for the service provisions for the boats, the vessels and the immediate services, but for the supporting um, goods and services that will be required from locals that to be brought in to, to furnish these vessels when they come in for their marine top-ups, for their short stays, for their quick trips over to the Tobagos. So this gives a, a more localised view of this is the very west end of the site. So this is Glossy Hill, um, this is the commercial area that's planned, the temporary dive centre captain area over here. The largest vessel you're looking at here is the 100, 100 meter. Um, the piers that you're seeing in this sketch, in this old presentation, they've been modified and we can show you on the master plan behind you how these things have changed in the development through our own engineering analysis and value engineering. Uh, but we're now we're able to cater up to a 110 meter vessel in, in this location. Um, like I said, I think we're looking at 125 vessels in all on board. Yes. Employment opportunities will be available to Vincentians at all stages of this project. Already, the current phase of the project employs 350 Vincentians. We caught up with one of the workers who was returning to the construction site after his lunch break. We come from Penistan, but we're working in um, Kenawan here. We're doing steel work and we are doing wonderful work here. So we're looking forward for a good produce and a good everything. Okay, so how long you you working down in Kenawan? Well, about, about five or six months now. Okay. But we're doing a wonderful, a wonderful job. So I'm looking forward to get good report. God bless you. Okay, so how did you hear about this project to come down? To well, I was working before in Bukoment and other places and construction and my foreman walking down here and I get in touch with him and he get in touch with his boss and I get called immediately. So I glad, thank God for this. Alright, yeah. and how you feel about the development taking place in Canada? Well, I go say it's going good. It's going good, real good. Because for me and for others, things are going good. But I don't know, some people might say no, some people might say yes, but then for me, eh, for me, for me as a family man, I say well, thank God. All the best. Okay, thank you very much, Jaron. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Mr. Godfrey Pompey, who was part of the tour, said that further arrangements would be made to train Vincentians to walk on the yachts once a project is completed. And General Manager of the Marina Project, Roberto Tudisca, gave us a tour of the construction site. The area of where uh, the mega yachts began. But they can turn in and they can come out again. Down on the road over there, of course, the depth of this, uh, this side will be six meters, right? Then we have a four meter and a half uh, on the P4, uh, P5. P, uh, P and then we have a from P5 to P15, uh, which is at the end of uh, the flushing channel, three meter and fifty. The uh, depth of the channel has been uh, lowing down to accommodate up to 40 meter uh, boats that they can sail in until the end of the flushing channel. The service area is there, that area where they are both building. Of course, the finishing there will be for who knows, uh, more or less, uh, the inside club with same material, same finishing. We're talking about top class uh, finishing. We have a uh, uh, fuel docker, we have diving center, we have bathroom, male, female, and so forth. Uh, substation, retaining wall, all technical building, right, on that side. The one thing we haven't mentioned, Bob, is the sheer amount of uh, utility modules that we'll be providing for the vessels. I think we have over 220 units to support each vessel that comes in with water, electricity, communications. Sewage. Yeah, and Some obviously firefighting yeah. and SOS and handling. Yeah. So. Those modules, we can show you some cut sheets on those when we go back later, but they'll be positioned all along the quayside 
and on all the way along each finger pier um, throughout the marina, all the way down, private villa berths included. So it's just getting the, the supplies, the utilities to supplies those has been um, challenging, but it's, it's uh, we're there now, and the designs are confirmed, and uh, we're going to be awfully impressed with the, the product that we deliver. Tadiska is confident that his crew, which started construction work on the project in June last year, would be able to deliver the first phase of the project by this year end to make the marina operational. We are putting together schedule it and uh, we are uh, uh, beside the fact that we are audit remotely basic, basically weekly uh, basis. Uh, we are keeping and uh, uh, reschedule it and analyze uh, all uh, what data that is coming from performance and so forth. And to be honest with you, I mean, we don't see why we cannot make it uh, before December. Uh, we have to be uh, extremely problem, but I mean, uh, uh, with the pace that we take and with the commitment of my colleagues and uh, all, uh, all the workers, I don't see why we can So when can potential clients begin to book? I'm going to come and spend a week at your marina. We, we said that uh, for December. No, but when, when would you be open for bookings? I think for December, yeah. We okay. said for December, operational December will be. Yeah. We're going to open before, but it will be operational, meaning that we should be having all the models ready, that they can provide electricity, uh, they can provide uh, water, they can provide uh, uh, sewer. So what we're thinking about is uh, in December we will have uh, the entire marina that will be uh, operational, that you can enter with the boat and you can work you can have in the services. Any interest so far being shown by yachts or boat persons? Well, we, we got a uh, passing guests that they come in and they stop, they, they come in and see the place uh, and to be honest with you, everybody, they are very outstanding on the location. The, this marina is a very nice place, it's very protected from uh, the sea, even if it's uh, exposed to south. And uh, this area, by the time that you put the boat here, even if it's about weather, it will be affected. Plus, I mean, uh, everybody knows that the camera is very quiet on the island. It's very friendly. I don't see why the people do not come here and uh, get to enjoy all these uh, facilities. That from the north of the Caribbean to the south of the Caribbean is the only one that there will be at this level with this number of girls. I'm from paradise, SPG, so from the hills to the mountains. We then headed to another development on Kanawan called the Pink Sands Resort. This luxurious resort is being marketed as the most exclusive resort in the West Indies, designed and built with a quality rarely seen. After we were given a tour of this facility by resort staff, headed by its public relations manager Helen Child and reservations manager Melissa Solomon, it was not hard to envision why this resort is among the best in the West Indies. Restaurant. This is our specialty or fine dining restaurant. This is our fine dining restaurant and it's called Juliet. So it, it serves only dinner and we cater to up to 60 guests. The restaurant is close to our wine cellar. So basically, if we have a family, they can reserve this area for themselves. There's two of these areas. This one is more private and there's the other room that is the green room we refer to it as. This restaurant, we have a seat about 90. Um, it's sort of like family style, meaning it's sort of on the table, something like buffet here. This 
is the highest and um, one bedroom suite that we do this have. Is 2005? This one is not 2000, this one is 4000. What? EC? For now, US yeah. dollar. Transformation to this area of development is remarkable, especially after looking at some before and after pictures. Investors have pumped millions of dollars to bring about this transformation. They have imported tons of sands from Barbados to completely transform beaches, which some said have been underutilized before the development. After the development and the magnificent transformation, these two beaches have now become the center of contention between some residents and the investors relating to land access to the said beaches. Investors have said that land access to the beach is available but with some level of organization. Representatives of the investors told us that once locals come to the gate of the resort and want to access the beach, then they are taken by a golf cart to the beach. Further, if a group of 10 or more persons want to access the beach, the resort requires a notice beforehand so that they can make the requisite arrangements. So it's the main, main entry for staff. So this is where the staff will do their work behind the scenes. More or less it was created for us to be able to work without the, the guests seeing us or having too much presence in front of the guests. The access to the beach, well for the locals, I know that um, I believe they can come here. To be honest, I'm not sure, certain where they do come because we can pick them up by cars if they come by the gate and then we will bring them through here or they can come through the top gate, which is the guest entrance, to enter the property. Also, we have by the beach, you can come by boat. 
Director of Grenadine's Affairs, Mr. Edwin Snag, believes that the arrangement is reasonable and that a compromise is needed to amicably resolve the matter in light of the magnitude of the investment done in the area. Snag maintains and reiterated that all beaches in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are public and that putting an arrangement in place does not mean taking away the rights of the people of Kanawan. As a good thing that you are here on the actual spot and you could see the configuration of, of the place and that the hotel is actually built on the beach. The issue really is the question of having a public access and having a public access in which they could, you could use 24 hours a day. I mean, certainly, one has to be mindful that with a resort of this nature and magnitude, and I would guess if you look around, you would recognize that the issue of security is, is, is of primary importance. And I, and I don't think that with this type of, with this type of resort and this, this, the, the magnitude of this, that you will want to have public access 24 hours unrestricted. There must be a certain level of control and management, and I think it is simple as that. The investors here have indicated quite clearly that anybody who comes to the gate and wants to have access to go to the beach is brought here by a golf cart. Sorry, is brought here by a golf cart. Obviously, you don't you don't drive private vehicles in here. It is not a lot. Not even the homeowners. And if you come in with a group that is, is more than ten or so, that you provide early notice, provide them with notice so that they can make the necessary arrangements. When they had the picnic, one would recognize that the, the, the investors provided them with a bus and took them, I think they probably made about two chips and brought the food and so on and that kind of thing. The whole thing about it is that, is that there is a system and it has to have a certain amount of balance and reasonableness on both sides of the turf. I mean, one you're not giving up your rights because if you compromise because of a particular situation, we know the magnitude of it, we know the amount of persons who, who will be working here, the amount of persons employed, one has to be mindful of the overall spin-off and the benefit to the country as a whole. And if you compromise, it doesn't mean that you're giving up your rights so that you're giving up a privilege. It doesn't make you, it doesn't belittle you, it doesn't, it doesn't do that to you because you still have access to come, you know. I mean, one could say that you could come by boat, and I wouldn't say that because that is not an issue. But always come by boat, because nobody could stop you from coming to any beach, go to any beach in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But the public access is where the issue is. <laughs> and as I say, it's it's a bit, it's a bit, it's 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 a complicated issue. But things do happen, and arrangements are always made. And why can't we make an arrangement where you can come to the you can come to the beach by coming to the gate? And because some people say. Oh, we don't want the developers to think that they're doing us a favor, you know. It's not a favor. It's your right to go to the beach. All beaches in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are public. But then here you have a resort, a five-star resort, and you have, you have a certain type of clientele. And one has to understand, one, your security is, which is, always, which is a critical element. Now we are happening. I'm belittling my people and I don't want this to be taken out of context and nobody not to understand. But we will have an individual who might ride in here at midnight or one o'clock in the morning with an ambulance bike with no more fly in it. Oh we have some you are, there are some villas there where I see copper guttering. I mean you 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 have to be so mindful and careful particularly with the tourism product as it is now. We just had, you know, the issue down at down, down the river there at Wallablu and these little things and the smallest thing that has to happen, you know, will 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 will, will, will put some difficulty on the on, on the whole tourism product as a whole. What I think however though is that in the initial stages of this project, I don't think that the people at Canaan had an understanding of the magnitude of the project. I think that the PR work that was done then, I mean, probably was not its best, you know. And the project has emerged, and as, and as it, it is emerging, you, 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 you're seeing some of the difficulties that are, that are coming up. In fact, I will call them challenges because they're not insurmountable. And certainly they could be sorted out by understanding, and there must be a certain amount of reasonableness and balance on both sides of the team. And while we await an amicable resolution to this issue, what remains certain is that Ping Sands, with its 26 suites and 20 villas, 
overlooking the turquoise waters of Goodall Beach and said to be the most exclusive resort in the West Indies, remains open to both locals and foreigners seeking that ultimate luxurious relaxation. For the API, I am Shana Daniel reporting.